Now I'm going to walk you through real quick how to set up a new ad group. So you go into the campaign that you want to put the ad group under. You just click this red button, add ad group. Now what it's going to do is if you already have an existing ad that you're already using, it's going to copy it and shortcut you to now set up a new ad group using the same ad. So this is a great time saver because sometimes we do want to start a new ad group and have that other ad already in there. This just shows the ad I created in this kind of sample account and it's pulling the ad that was used. Well, the first thing is you want to add your ad group name for the new ad group. You don't want to call it ad group number three or four or five. I've already explained this. You can go back to the lesson earlier in this module about how to structure your account. You want to use a naming scheme that you'll be able to look at reports and know what those naming conventions are. Because once you start having hundreds, if not thousands of ad groups, you'll really need some kind of codified way to know what is what. So this is where you'll put the code, whatever that's going to be for this ad group. Then you put in your ad, headline, description, all this kind of stuff. Now again, depending on when you're watching this video, coming soon, Google's going to be making changes. So you may not see this description line one or two. It may be just description because we know it's coming soon. They announced it where it's not going to be kind of 235 character lines. It's going to be 180 character line. So this may look slightly different, but it's probably going to be the same way. And I'll try to update the video, of course, if it changes. But this is where you type in your ad, your headline description. The display URL shows in the ad. That's the green line, the green part. But that's not where the clicks will go. That's this, final URL. That's where you put the URL and that actually goes to your actual landing page. So the display URL is what shows in the ad. In the previous lessons, I talked about how you can use that to your advantage and do some creative things with the display URL to try to improve your click, click rates. Uh, so that's where you would put it. And then of course, but your final URL is your actual URL. Now URLs for mobile, this is if you were sending traffic from the same ad to desktop and to mobile. You could have mobile traffic go to a different URL if you had a different type of landing page for mobile. Uh, but we're not going to mess with mobile. I suggest you just target like desktops and laptops. So you're just going to use the one final URL. So you don't mess with URLs for mobile. The other one is add URL options, advanced tracking templates and parameters and codes. This is if you had some kind of very unique tracking on your server and you were going to do something very special with the data and those things. You could do some very advanced things here, but most people don't even need to mess with this. So leave that blank. So down here, the keywords part, this is the most important part for the ad group or what keywords that you're going to use. So in this box here, add your keywords. This is where you put them. Google will give you some suggestions on the right hand side. If you want to add one of those, you'll click add. So for this start, an, start a online business, you'd click add. You'll notice now it moves it over into the box. So that's going to show the ad if someone searches for this keyword. But you'll notice we previously talked about the different match types and putting brackets or quotes or plus signs in front of words or around words. Notice how this doesn't have anything. That's because this is a broad match. What we absolutely do not want to use for any of our keywords. So we would never want to just have it in here like this. Anyways, in this box area, so we can highlight and just click delete on our keyboard to remove it. This is where we'll want to use our, our matches. So using the profit machine keyword strategy that I taught you in that lesson previously, this is where you would set up the different keywords. So for example, if this is going to be an exact match ad group for Grow Tomatoes, you would type it in with the bracket, Grow Tomatoes, close bracket, that's it and you'd click save ad group. So this would be the exact match ad group for the Grow Tomatoes keyword, just like I taught you. Now for that other keyword, uh, ad group, I mean, where it would be for Grow Tomatoes, but with the other ones, you would do plus Grow, to, to plus grow I'm sorry, and then, whoops, plus Tomatoes. And the next line you would do in quotes, Grow Tomatoes, and then another quote. So now we've added the broad match modifier keyword and then of course the phrase match one as well, which I suggest. So this would be the second ad group in the strategy that I taught you to use. But I also taught you when you go to set up this ad group, we want to have the negative keyword, if you remember, for the exact match. So we're not wasting impressions on an exact match if someone only typed in grow tomatoes. So what we do here on a third line is we do a minus sign and then immediately with no spaces, we do brackets grow tomatoes, close brackets. So we put the thing in there for exact match, but we put a negative in front of it. Now what this does is it adds a negative keyword to this ad group. So we won't be showing the ads 
for any exact match, only for the broad match modifier ones and only the Grow Tomatoes ones for phrase match, which is what the quotes are. So this is how you would set up that new ad group you know, when you're expanding. So remember we used the example of Cherry. So if we found that looking at our data that there was another subset of searches being done for Grow Cherry Tomatoes, well, just like I taught you, when you go to set up different ad groups, the first one you would set up, you would do Grow Cherry Tomatoes like this. So this would be our first ad group. So we'd click Save Ad Group. We'd set up an ad group just with that. Then we would come in and we'd create another ad group. And this time we would have the broad match modifier, the plus symbol in front of each of these words. And on the next line, we would do in quotes, the phrase match. But don't forget, we need to add a negative in this ad group at the ad group level for the exact match. So that's where we would do this. Whoops, typing's terrible. Sorry. And that now adds the negative keyword for the exact match that we have in the other ad group. Now, when we save this, it's gonna set up the new ad group for those keywords. So we're inside the ad group that we created that shows the grow cherry tomatoes. So this line is the phrase match. This line is the broad match modifier. We can control bids. We can do all kinds of things separately for each one of those match types. But what you'll wanna do is if you come up here and click negative keywords, you'll see that negative keywords add group level. Here is the exact match grow cherry tomatoes that we added. So let's say you go to set up a new ad group using that strategy where you use the pluses and the quotes. So you're adding the BMM and you're adding the uh, phrase match. But let's say you forgot to put in the negative keyword of the exact match. Well, here's how you would add it. You click negative keywords once you're in that ad group, and then you could add it here. You click plus, and then you would add in what it is, and you put it in that exact format. You have to put it in brackets. So this is how you could add more or remove them or do anything to them. You come into negative keywords. Now, over on the right-hand side, you'll notice it says campaign level. Now, these are negative keywords on the campaign level. This is where you'd want to, just like I explained, add negative keywords uh, that's for all the ad groups. These are the ones that you don't want any of your ads showing for, like the word free or remember the cheap baseball bats thing, maybe the word cheap or, you know, download, you know, things that we don't want to have our ad shown for if those words are used, you know, with any inside any of the keyword variations. Well, that's where you would add it there. You don't necessarily add it under ad group unless it's only specific to what your strategy is with a specific ad group. So typically, if we're doing things where we're adding negative keywords, where it's like, you know, beginner something or other, or something for kids, and we don't want to want to have our ad shown to anything if it's a search for like, you know, camping gear for kids, if, or tennis, tennis rackets for kids, if we only sell it, say, adult tennis rackets, then we put that word kids uh, at the campaign level. So for all the ad groups we put under that campaign, uh, none of the ads would ever be triggered or shown if someone has a search that contains the word kids. But that's how you come in and you add uh, ad groups and that's how you add negative keywords.